All right, a special football Friday edition here of Krantz's Corner. The Vegas Raiders are coming to town to play the Miami Dolphins. And, uh, yeah, Dolphins coming off a bye week. Vegas coming off a, a nice week as well. But we're going to talk here with one of the best, Lincoln Kennedy, joining us here on Krantz's Corner. First off, welcome to Krantz's Corner. We appreciate the appearance today. Well, thank you for having me. I appreciate being here. No, no problem. He's doing the Vegas radio stuff there, Lincoln Kennedy. Uh, it's been an interesting season for the Raiders this year, five and five still in the mix at this point. What have you gathered from this team through 10 games of this NFL season? Well, you know, amongst the, the head coaching change and all the changes that have, that have been for personnel, we still really don't know what to make of this team. I mean, right. last two weeks they played with a lot of energy. Um, and more importantly, the the, first, the entire game against the Giants uh, two weeks ago and more of a half against the Jets, they came out flat in the first half. And whatever happened in that locker room during halftime, uh, got them fired up to be able to come back and uh, beat the Jets. But when you think about it, you know, two subpar teams, the Jets and the Giants, how can you really kind of get your mind around what type of team you have with that case? Uh, coming down to Miami, which a high potent offense and coming off a of bye week is probably got their, their players healthy. It's going to be a little big test for the Raiders. Yeah, it definitely and it's a test for the Dolphins too, coming off that bye week to make sure that everything is okay and guys are a little bit healthier. Like you said, this is a perfect time for the bye week for this Dolphins team here. Antonio Pierce takes over uh, this team. How's his voice in that locker room? I know that sometimes when a former player comes in there, players really adapt quickly at that point. But how has his voice been throughout the the entire 53-man roster and in the building just in general so far? Well, I think what you've seen, been able to see resonate, you got two wins. So after the coaching change, you end up winning two games. That's what you're taking solace in. And as you go on the rest of the schedule, the teeth, the main teeth of the schedule, you still have to play Kansas City twice. He's got the mighty Dolphins this week. It's going to be a, a big uphill climb for this team. They've got a lot of work they need to do. But for what it's from what we've seen so far, AP's voice has kind of resonated, gave them a positive vibe, a jolt of energy, if you will. And that's one of the reasons why they've been able to play so well as they did. Yeah, and I, you could see it also. You could see it, even though it was Jets and Giants, you could just see this team kind of, you know, a little bit different than they were before. Uh, one thing I, I've seen, and and of course, you know, you, you go this from me, either being an NFL fan or a fantasy football fan at this point, Josh Jacobs getting the rock a ton lately, and it's, and it's actually working out great for this team. He was the guy on this team last year. He was a big part of that offense, if not the biggest part of the offense last year. A little bit struggling early in the season, but Josh Jacobs having another solid couple of weeks, and I – assume it's going to be for the next couple of weeks also this is how this offense is going to run well they uh, they've often said that a quarterback's best friend is a running game and so that's going to help out your young quarterback that you're trying to you know make strides with Aiden O'Connell starting a rookie quarterback so yeah it's been good and it's getting better it's been a work in progress because teams have found a way to sort of nullify or try to take the running game away the Raiders have figured out a few things and, and it's going in a positive direction right now yeah. Aiden O'Connell, you brought him up, and that was something I was going to ask you about. A lot of the times rookie quarterback comes in, especially if they're like a first-round pick or the top pick overall, and it's their reins and everything. Aiden O'Connell just basically given the reins, and probably I'm guessing the keys to the car for the rest of the season outside of an injury at this point, he's going to be the starter. Um, what are you seeing from him so far, good and bad and stuff? I know he's, every rookie quarterback's got stuff they got to work on and they notice after one year, but what have you seen uh, good and bad from Aiden so far? Well, he's had, for the most part, he's had pretty good control of the huddle and the offense. He just has to speed up his internal clock. There's a lot of times where he's holding on to football and in, in proper situations. And in this past game against the Jets, um, there were a couple times where the Raiders were in field goal range and he took a couple sacks, got him out of field goal range. You got to be smarter than that, got to be wiser than that. But overall, the experience is coming. I think they're, I think it was absolutely essential for the Raiders to make this change at quarterback because they had to see what they had in the cupboard or the cabinet. You had to see if this is going to work. If it's not going to work, you might have to go out. There's some quarterbacks coming out next year at draft. You might have to go draft another one. But right now they're getting a chance to see what their fourth round pick has gotten is getting for them. I love the comments, I think, from Antonio Pierce. Maybe it was last week or a little bit before that when we talked about Devontae Adams and, A, how good he was, but, B, he said something like, I'm not stupid. I know I got to get him the ball more because he's probably the best player on offense outside of Josh Jacobs, and he's certainly gotten his targets in his last couple of weeks. Uh, have you seen something different in Devontae? Because I know there's whenever a wide receiver, and it seems to happen with wide receivers more than any other position, if they're not getting their targets and they're one of the best players on the team – they're a little frustrated, and maybe they show it to the media or not. Devontae sort of came out and was a little frustrated and said he wanted to get the ball a little bit more, and he has. I would just assume at this point the rest of the season, outside of Josh Jacobs running the ball, it's going to say let's target Devontae Adams as much as possible. He's one of the three best wide receivers in football. 
In this past game, I think the Raiders had 30 pass attempts, and 13 of them were targeted number 17. <laughs> so, right. look, my, my thing is this. I know you want to get the ball to your playmakers, and I understand that all the, uh, certainly, but the, my, my focus is that you can't do it at a nauseam. You know, you go back to the Go back to the Bears game, the Chicago Bears game. Right. After Devontae comments about I want to get the ball more, then they, they made it they put an effort to try to give him football. Well, the Bears jumped on it. It was actually turned into be an interception for a touchdown. So you gotta you gotta be smart, you gotta be creative. I understand, but you also gotta <clears throat> you go back to his days in Green Bay, they were creative with uh, trying to get him the football there too. You know, didn't always put him at the X or the Z. Sometimes they had to line up the slot. Those are things that you have to mix in, but you can't do it to a fault. To where your quarterback is constantly looking for it because it happened in this past Jets game. He was eyeballing Devontae Adams, safety jumped around, ended up having an inter- interception. Right. Yeah, you can't like we see it down here sometimes too with Tyree Kill when when they're kind of just trying to push the ball to him a lot. And it's happened yeah. over the last two years. And and listen, that's where I'm going to next with the wide receiver core, specifically down here in Miami. From an outside oh point of view, from someone who's not a dolphin fan or covering the dolphins. How much fun is it to see what's happening with this offense down here in Miami, especially with Tyree Kill and the way that Mike McDaniel's using him? My favorite part is not just going downfield to him or getting the ball. I love the little sneaky kind of right pre-play kind of motion he does when he kind of hides under the offensive lineman a little bit. It, it's fun to see what Mike McDaniel's doing, especially with a guy like Tyree Kill. Well, when you have an, an, an aggressive play caller like Mike McDaniel is, and more importantly, you have all that speed at your disposal, I mean, what's not to like? I mean, if you're an offensive player, it, it's just the sky's the limit. You've got a quarterback who's smart enough to know how to get get the ball to his playmakers, and you've got a creative offensive coordinator that's calling plays to get find creative ways to get it. That's what I'm trying to explore with number 17 on our squad. I mean, all that speed that you guys have at the Miami Dolphins makes them a very potent and dangerous offense. Right, yeah, and it's fun. It's really fun to watch, but that offense has just taken a full circle from a couple of years ago, what this Miami Dolphins offense looked like for probably 20 straight years and what happened when Mike McDaniel came down here. And immediately when he came down here, it made viral. It went. It was viral news. Mike McDaniel FaceTiming with Tua. He believed in Tua since day yeah. one. It's definitely showing at this point where Tua is not only having a great season, has been in the MVP discussion, and the Dolphins are winning. And that's the main right. focus at this point. What are your thoughts on Tua as you've seen him from a distance? I love the progression then the maturity, the fact that now that he doesn't have the cloud of the, the concussions and everything hanging over his head, he's playing, he's playing, he's a smarter quarterback, he's developed wisely. And I think this Miami Dolphin team has a potent, the potential with their offensive defense to go pretty deep in the playoffs. Yeah, and the defense is kind of biting the last couple of weeks also. Vic Fangio finally getting guys in full strength. Jalen Ramsey coming back. Jalen Phillips playing better on the edge. Linebacker right. play has been good also. a lot. That's been something over the last couple of years, even covering this team or doing radio down here, has been linebacker play. People complain about the linebacker play and not making tackles. Right. This year, they're doing a good job on that. But I think all three phases of that defense – are really hitting at the right time now. And Vic Fangio has got to be sitting back going, how many teams around the NFL come week 9, 10, and 11 can get a guy like Jalen Ramsey back and Jalen Phillips back healthy? So it's helping out for sure down here. One thing that's been a national perspective on this Dolphins team is they can't beat the good teams. You know, They lose to the Bills, they lose to the Eagles, they lose to the Chiefs over in Germany. Are you buying into the kind of fins or frauds kind of type of, uh, you know, I guess, conversation. I, I mean, I understand you got to beat a good team, and when you get to the playoffs, they're all good teams. But they lost to the Eagles, they lost to the Chiefs, they lost to the Bills, who look a little bit fraudulent now. But they're losing to the, the good teams, at least. They're not losing these big games they should, lo- you know, win. Is that a conversation that happens? Can can they be called the frauds at this point? No, no, I, I wouldn't necessarily say that. I mean, I think good teams have to find a way to beat good teams. And more importantly, I always thought that if you want to be the best, you have to beat the best. So, I think they're. <clears throat> I think they're. The Dolphins are in the, the the running to be a good football team. They just have to learn how to beat those those better teams and how to fight through some of those things that you've seen and the the, the losses that they've had this year. All right. So this is, and then we'll end on this one. And I really appreciate your time, Lincoln Kennedy, coming on here to preview the Dolphins and Raiders. So I got married in Vegas. Me and my wife eloped in Vegas. We we're there before mm-hmm. the football. Anything of the football even came there, stadium or anything. I can't imagine. I haven't been there since. I can't imagine how this city is embracing this team the last couple of years, now hosting a Super Bowl coming up. How amazing is it to see how amazing is it to see what the city has turned into a sports town outside of forever being literally just a gambling town to go to to go for the weekend or whatever it is. And now they're a full-fledged sports town. It's got to be fun to see that. I'm reminded of uh, one of the conversations that I had with um with Mark Bedane when he was the, the team president then. 
he was talking about what better way to cap off a wonderful weekend than to be able to go see a football game. And that that's before the Raiders even became, you know, even right. moved to Vegas. So, but, but it's, uh, it's right. Look, Vegas is known as the entertainment capital for a reason. They've got shows, they've got gambling, everything. They've got something for everyone. Now you add the sports and the Legion stadium has been one of those extra wonders of the world where people want to come in from out of town. And that's why you got such a big uh, ch- turnover from visiting teams, their fans, when everybody wants to see a Legion, right. everybody wants to come to Vegas and hang out. So it's been a great thing for the, for football. Not only that, the sports and, the city has grown magnanimously due to sports and, you know, just got right. voted in to have an expansion team for basketball. So men's basketball, baseball is probably going to be in the end and some teams going to go there. It's all these things combined makes it an entertainment capital. And that's one of the things I love about Vegas. It's been right. great. Yeah. It's just, it's just amazing to see what's happened in a, in a time frame of about 10 years of yeah. what Vegas has become. And I can't wait to see it 10 years from now. Like you said, right, basketball, baseball, and all that stuff. Lincoln, have a safe flight to Miami. I hope you have a great time down here for a day or two. Eat at Joe's Stone Crabs if you can, Primal Very 12 much. if you can. Whatever you Very can get your hands on, even though I know you have it at like Caesars, you know, out there in Vegas too at Joe's. It's all good. Oh, good. I, I love, I love Joe's. I love those crabs. So we'll get, get over there at Stone Crab Season. You'll have a great yeah. time there as well. Lincoln, thank you for your time. We really appreciate thank it on Crancis Corner today. Appreciate it having me. Thank you. All right. That's the great Lincoln Kennedy previewing Raiders and Dolphins here on Crancis Corner.